Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and in this mini Unity tutorial I'm going to show you how you can randomise the position of objects on a button press. So the idea of what we're going to do is we're going to be able to press a button on our keyboard and it will randomise the position of let's say this animal right here. And we want it to randomise within this position where we can actually see it on the camera. So let me just explain what we have here with the camera. So we can see if we press play we have this general area here. Here's our animal and we want it to appear within this general area around here. So first and foremost, let's determine which key on our keyboard we're going to press to enable this to happen. So if we go to edit, project settings and input, if we click the arrow next to our axes, we can see a list of the buttons that we can use right here. And I'm going to use the submit. So if we click on this, we can see we can use the return key on the keyboard to activate this button here. So we remember that submit that's what we're going to use now to do this we're going to create a c sharp script so in our asset window down here right click create c sharp script and i'm going to call this um zoo random the reason i'm calling it zoo random is for two reasons one so it appears at the end here alphabetically because of the z and also because an animal belongs in a zoo so why not so let's open this up in visual studio and this script itself is going to contain three variables and only three variables. So let's get rid of void start and void update and any annotations. We do not need those. And firstly, let's declare three variables. The first one I'm going to have as public int and let's have it x pos, which is going to determine our x position. Public int z pos, which is going to determine our z position. And finally, the actual object itself. In this case, it's the animal. So we're going to have public game object the animal semicolon. So let's head back to Unity and define where we're going to be able to have this particular object. So if we click it and let's move it to about here so we can see the position is going to be 80 on the X. And if we move it over here, the minimum is going to be, let's say, about 30. So 30 to 80 on the X. And let's say 290. Let's have 290 on the Z. And what was the original amount? Let me quickly move that back. And 260. So we've got roughly 30 here. So these are the numbers that we need to reference within this script. Now, if we go down here and go on void, update, open close bracket, doesn't need to be private, it's auto filled out, we don't need that. And firstly, we need to determine if our button is being pressed. And we can do that by going if, uh, in brackets, sorry, my problem's typing there, guys. <laughs> Input dot get button down, and in brackets and quotes, we put that submit. So if you want to use a different button, for example, the escape button, which is labeled as cancel by default, you would type the word cancel here. So because we're typing submit, the script is going to know that we're pressing the enter or return button. So close bracket, close bracket, open curly bracket. At this point, we need to generate a random position for both our coordinates. So we can go x pos equals random dot range and in brackets we put the minimum so if we remember on the x the minimum was about 30 so we can put 30 comma and then the maximum and the maximum we had as i think it was 80 wasn't it so we'll have 80 semicolon same again for the z position so z pos equals random dot range and in brackets the minimum which was 260, so 260, comma, and the maximum was, I think, 290, we said, didn't we? So we'll have 290, 290, close bracket, semicolon, and remember, these figures probably aren't going to be the same for you. I'm using these figures because that's this area around here for me, so it's all about getting your area for yourself. So you'll have to measure your own area, get your own figures, and you just do it the same way I've done. It's fairly simple to do. So the next thing we need to do is place that actual object. And we can go the animal 
dot transform dot position equals new vector three. And the reason we use a vector three is because we could use this in the three D environment. So, i.e., it allows us to state x, y, and z coordinates. And you'll notice at this point, I haven't actually used any z, uh, sorry, any y coordinates. And you can if you want to. The reason I'm not doing it at the moment is because I want it to appear on the ground anywhere here. So I'm going to have to use the constant number of minus 9.8 to actually get this appearing on the Y. But like I say, use the same principles we've done with the X and the Z to create a Y position if you want to. So here we state the X and then the Y. So again, if you've done the Y position, you would put Y pos here or whatever you've called your variable. I'm just going to put minus 9.8 because that's what it is for me in this exact scene. And then Z, pause, close bracket, semicolon, and we just need to put an F after that right there, because it's a float. And then we save the script. Head back into Unity, and we shouldn't have any errors. Perfect. So now let's quickly add in a new game object and attach that script to the game object. And then just drag and drop that variable. So now what will happen is this animal here will start where he belongs, right here. And when we press play and press return or enter, he should move. There we go. So every time you press it, you can see him changing position. He disappeared off screen there, I suspect because his position was just below where the camera is, so we couldn't quite see him. What you should be able to see is coordinates are right here. So if we click on him, we should be able to see that example. He is 66, 262. And here, 66, 262. Perfect. So every time we press, his position changes. Completely random. And you can use that with pretty much anything in Unity. It doesn't necessarily have to be this uh, low poly animal that I've used in this low poly scene. It could be a cube. It could be your character. Absolutely anything. So it, it, it's a real handy thing to use because you can, let's say, have a quick little app on your ga a game on your app, you hit enter and it moves. So you could use this in a lot of different ways. It's just very handy to know how you can move things randomly with a button press. So guys, I hope you learned something. If you need to know any more on this, I have plenty of tutorials that you could go through. Uh, just check out my playlists. And if you wanna know anything else or have any problems, please leave a comment below and I'll try my best to get back to you. If not, some of the fabulous people in the Unity community probably will that's hard to say unity community okay so guys until next time thank you very much for watching